Okay, so let's solve this question. The question is saying a child and a slit weighing 290 newtons slide down an ice covered frictionless hill that is 10 meters high with respect to the level ground. At the bottom of the hill, there is an ice free punch. The horizontal surface brings the slit to stop within a distance of 25 meters. What is the coefficient of kinetic friction between the slid learners and the horizontal surface? Use the energy method. Okay, so uh, first thing, we need first to understand the question. So this question is coming from work energy and power. Now what we need to understand is that um, we have got a child and the slid that was on top of the building. We can say the top of building. Now what is happening is that initially on top they are going to have the energy. Then as it is going down, we are going to be uh, we are going to have another energy. But now what is happening is that since at this part, part A, that object was not moving, it was released from rest. Initially we are going to have only potential energy. Why are we going to have only potential energy? We know that potential energy is given by mgh so kinetic energy is given by half mv squared so we don't have velocity meaning that we don't have kinetic energy at part a now there we are going to have only potential energy but as it is coming here down you are going to discover to say this potential energy is going to be converted into what kinetic energy so immediately when we reach at part b all the potential energy which was uh, at part a is going to be converted into what kinetic energy part b Okay, then now what are we going to say? We, we can say that this potential energy is going to be equal to the kinetic energy which is going to be at part B. So we are going to say that we are going to say that potential energy at part A, or first we can just write potential energy at part A plus kinetic energy at part A has to be equal to the potential energy at part B plus the kinetic energy at part B. But we need to remember that at part A we don't have kinetic energy so we can cancel this at part b we don't expect to have potential energy because the h is zero so we don't take to have that so we are going to have the potential energy at part a has to be equal to the kinetic energy at part b so potential energy is m g h is going to be equal to half m v squared now that velocity which we are going to find is going to be the velocity at b we want to find the friction force or the kinetic uh, um, the coefficient of friction from this point all the way to the to that point now we need first to find this velocity now that velocity is the one which is going to help us to find the what the coefficient of kinetic okay so now what we are going to have is uh, we want to find the velocity we can cancel the mass okay we cancel the mass and then we are going to have uh, g h is going to be equal to half v squared we can do times 2 everywhere okay to get rid of the half times 2 so we're going to have 2gh is going to be equal to v squared so to get the v is going to be equal to the square root of 2gh okay so that velocity which we're going to find is the velocity at b so we can plug in the values now so v is going to be equal to the square root of we have 2 g is 9.8 then the h we have we have been given that the h is 10 so we're going to put 10 there okay <clears throat> so we're going to say that 2 times 9.8 times 10 is giving me 196 the square root of that one i'm getting 14 so the velocity at b is going to be equal to 14 meters per second okay so that is the velocity now the question is we want to find the um, the coefficient of kinetic friction so now we know that the only uh, the only force which was there from point B to point C let's let's denote this one point C it is only the friction force so if if we have only friction force then we can say that the work done the work done by the friction is going to be equal to change in kinetic energy okay so if you have only friction force which is uh, present at that particular point then you can use this formula to say the work done by the friction force is going to be equal to change in kinetic energy okay now we need to understand that the work done by the friction force you know that work is given by force time displacement but now we're talking about the work done by the friction force so it's going to be 
uh, the, fo the friction force times the displacement is going to be equal to this one is going to be the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy but we need to understand one thing again we know that when this uh, when this child come to rest here the final kinetic energy is going to be zero because we don't expect to have the final velocity so this guy is going to be cancelled here we don't expect to have that so we're going to have the the friction force times d is going to be equal to negative this initial but we have the initial velocity so we expect to have what initial kinetic energy but we also need to understand that the friction force is given by mu times the normal force so i'm going to replace the friction force with what mu times the normal force but now we need to understand this the friction force is opposing the motion it's going in this direction therefore it's supposed to carry a negative so i'm supposed to put the negative here so i'm going to say that it's going to be negative mu times fn times d is going to be equal to negative half mv squared okay that is our formula then now from there what are, what else are we supposed to do we want to find the value of mu what are we going to do we can see that negative appears both sides we can cancel the negative so we can have uh, we are going to have mu times fn <coughs> times d has to be equal to the half mv squared but we should also understand that let's get rid of this we should also understand that the fn the fn is given by what uh, the normal force is given by mu sorry the normal force is given by mg so i can replace mg with this guy so we're going to say that mu is going to be where there's fn we're going to put what mg times d is going to be equal to we have half mv squared we can also see that this m appears both sides we can cancel the m okay so we cancel the m after canceling the m we're going to have the mu we're going to have mu gd is going to be equal to half v squared our goal is to find the mu so we can divide both sides by g times d even here g times d so we're going to have the mu is going to be equal to half times v squared over g d now let's plug in the values okay so if we are to plug in the values here this is what we are going to get we have mu is going to be equal to we have half the velocity is 14 now we square it we divide this one by 9.8 times the, the the distance is what is 25 this distance from here all the way to this point is 25 so we have 25 there Okay, so now let's see. So we have um, 14 squared. 1 over 2 is the same as 0 0.5. Okay, we divide this one by uh, 25 times 9.8. Okay, so I'm getting my mu value as the mu is going to be equal to 0 0.4 now we need to understand that mu is always less than or equal to 1 if you find that the mu is greater than 1 your answer is wrong thank you for making it to the end of this video if you enjoyed the video and you wish to access the other videos on the other topics all the way from vectors to thermodynamics or the last topic that you're going to cover in physics do register with us and you also have access to all the tutorial sheet questions you have solutions to them they are all covered in video form and also past paper revisions that are about to start upon the completion of the last topic that you're going to cover in your physics course be it 1015 or 1010 and you have access to all these at only 100 quacha until you write your exam of course not forgetting that upon registration you are allowed to text your questions to the tutors and of course you have access to the solutions which allows you to prepare even more adequately for your exams